Welcome everybody again to our third day together in the Heart of Service webinar series. Your turn, share your wisdom. And today we are going to open our, our day with our dear Hakan Agbas. He's going to share about you are not who you think you are. Hakan spent 30 years on and off the personal development and self growth bandwagon, a period full of efforting and struggling with recurring beliefs of, I deserve better than this. It's so much hard work. All that started to change when he came across the principles. It was like he came home. Dear Khan, the space is all yours. Thank you. Yeah, that's so interesting to hear that um, reflected back to me because it reminds me of the time that, you know, when I was growing up, I always thought, I always had this feeling that I could be, do, or achieve more than what I'm got or doing. But there was this thing about hard work and efforting. And I think it was this family paradigm that I had, or we had, was, you know, if there's something you're going to do, it's going to take hard work and there's going to be so much effort. You're not going to enjoy it, but when you get it, that's it. It's worth it. So that's been like the theme of my life. And somehow on my journey, I discovered this personal development thing. And yeah, it was like, wow, this was like the missing link. And then on this journey, I started to realize how much hard work is like, you know, doing these things like visualizations, affirmations, goal setting and stuff like that. And I would sort of go on and off the bandwagon. And then it was a point where the pandemic hit. I was going through a divorce and I realized my life it needed to change. So I got back on the personal development bandwagon. And then I got into um, productivity. I, so I, I was working from home. Um, I realized at that time I couldn't go on like this because everything seemed scattered in my life. And I joined a productivity program. And then somewhere along the journey, I came across Michael Neal. Something, I actually knew Michael Neal before, um, before in his personal development days. And actually the days when he was doing NLP. And then somehow our path split and they re-emerged at the pandemic. And for me, the principles was like, as if I was coming back home. It was like... Everything I knew to be true is true in that. So on this personal development journey, there's one phrase that always stuck with me, and that is know thyself. And for me, knowing thyself and like knowing my strengths, knowing my weaknesses, knowing who I am, and I saw myself as someone that, who had this anxious feelings. I saw myself as someone that who um, was serious, who kind of went through life. Um, you know, when the good times were good, it was great. But when's the next thing? When's the next shoe going to fall off? When's the bad thing going to happen? This can't. We had, can't go on, and it happened. So that's who I saw myself, someone who literally had a stick up his ass, and that's who I saw me to be. And then one day I was in the kitchen, and something hit me, and that was, that's not you. That's who, that's the thinking about who you think you are. And in that moment, my 
world changed. The way I looked at myself, that person who had this, I didn't even know it was anxious feeling. I thought that was me. Hey, you know, that's the anxiousness. My daughter's coming around today. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do today? You know, she, on the weekend, she'd spend time with me. And I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with her? And I thought that was me, all of that. And I realized in that moment, that wasn't me. And what I've come to sort of see is that Who I am is there's a feeling behind that. And that's something what Michael Neal shone a light on for me when he said, remember the, the feeling that you would like to feel all the time. And if you just allow yourself to feel that. And then I realize in that moment, the feeling that I'm feeling is like this real lightness, this real joy, this feeling of, wow, being part of oneness. And I realize in that moment, that's the feeling I felt when my daughter was born. That's the feeling the essence of me. And then I realized in that moment is that was 13 years ago. And it's just the thinking that I got involved in me just sort of took me away from that. And that was like my biggest sort of insight, my biggest realization. And another one was when I was going through this time where I just felt I was feeling that mojo, that excitement. And um, I spoke to Michael Neal about this, and he said, the way he described it is that we're, it's like we're always plugged into the source of that mojo, that excitement. And the only thing that takes us away from it is interference. And I'm like, yeah, but I get this intellectually. You know, I got it, but I didn't really get it until, until I did podcasts with several people. Um, one of them was Billy Mann and Birdie Brown. And these were two people who were talking about how they had gone through life-threatening illnesses. And they had this zest for life that kept them going. And in that moment, somehow I heard this voice. And that was like, I don't have to wait to be at death's door to have a zest for life. And that sort of gave me this appreciation for life. Um, because Warner Eckhart, um, Warner, I think Warner Eckhart, he said, life is a privilege. And that kind of stuck with me. Because, you know, life is a privilege. And don't know what the exact figure is, but there's like brilliance to one chances of people to be born, and they weren't born, but somehow we run the race to being alive. And that's something I sort of remind myself sometimes, like it's something I forget as well, you know, when we're sort of I'm busy in my day. But at the end of the day, I do feel that life is a privilege and, and it's a joy.
behind us being here. And I'm so wondering, what else can I sort of share as well? <laughs> um, very quickly, I, what so always surprised me is how our minds can play tricks on us. So uh, there was a day when my daughter came with me. She stayed at my place. And me and her are really like buddies, friends. And it was the morning. And I said to her, look, if you go and make the breakfast, I'll have a shower. I had my shower. And I opened the door. And when I opened the door, the kitchen is in front of me. But the door has um, mirrors, not mirrors, windows, but it's very sort of cloudy. And I hear my daughter listen to her YouTube channels. In that moment, I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, she hasn't done what I asked her. We're going to be late. This, that, and the other. And then I just stopped. I just said, very calmly, have you started the breakfast? Only to realize she started the breakfast in the kitchen. I thought she didn't because I couldn't see her through the glass. And in that moment, I had all that racing thought because I was so close to saying, oh, my gosh, you're listening to those YouTube channels. You need to do this. You need to do that when she was already doing it and it was just in that moment how I just had that racing fall and how I was able to just pause in that moment and just ask her without without that racing fall sort of materializing out of me And I'm wondering, if I were to give a gift for everyone, it would be to remind us all that feeling, that essence of who we are at our core, that feeling. That feeling of, the feeling that we'll, we want to feel all the time, and that's the feeling of me, feeling of each and every one of us. There was something else that I wanted to share, but I forgot <laughs> on there. Yeah. And how innocent we could just sort of move away from that feeling as well and I think um, just leaving that feeling with each and every one of us I think that's a privilege and a joy And I think, as I sit here, there is nothing else I could give you other than that. Thank you. Yeah, that's all. Thanks. Are you ready to take some questions or comments? Yeah, sure. If does anyone have any questions, comments, anything they've seen? I I love how in the beginning you were pointing out how you've really seen that we're not 
our our thinking and we're not our feelings. There's something deeper to us. And then you wound it back to seeing seeing that who we really are really comes with a feeling. It was really beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else? You know, when I was just watching on the screen, it was pinned on Azul. I, did, I saw Azul's daughter come in. And that was so awesome just to see that. She wanted to say goodbye before I went to school. She's a, oh. such a sweetheart. I love Hakan how you like express what you saw and 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 that's the truth that you know we all keep seeing the same thing but deeper, the same thing but deeper. And and I wonder about the rest that are here. Like sometimes you can ask a question or or share what you heard, or sometimes you can share like a story about what you have seen, what Hakan shared with us today. So it's really open for everybody to express what there is going through. I remember in my case, for example, when I saw I'm not my thinking, I kind of took the easy journey of, yeah, yeah, I'm not my negative thinking, you know, like which I, which I consider really negative. Like the bad guys, yeah. Like, uh, no, I'm not those. But then later, I started saying, "Oh, I'm not those. Not those. <laughs> not those. Like I wasn't any. Like we are not any of our thoughts." And when you really look into that direction, it's like, wow. You know, it's like it's like seeing. Oh my God, I've been watching TV my whole life, and real life is out there. And realizing all the wonders and miracles and experiences you might have been not having. And now there's this door to be free and experience more. It's like, I can hear pointing us again to this wonder of a, a world that has infinite possibilities again. So thanks for that. What is the rest thing? Don't be shy. Your wisdom is a gift for all of us. Hi, Laura. You can also say, oh yeah, I get it, but I don't see it in my life. The yes, but <laughs> that's also possible for you here. I can, I always enjoy watching you um, and listening to you. You have such a quiet, almost excitable energy about you when you talk. Like it just, it feels like when you share stuff, it is literally in the moment as well. Like I love the little pauses and stuff you bring. I love you, um, what you said at the end around wanting to be able to give this wonderful gift to others and just you know to, to pass that on i'd love to know how you do that in your world now like how do you pass on this wonderful gift to others or help them to unlock or uncover it uncover what you what you've seen I would love to stay through me being me, my beingness. But that's not always the case. Because sometimes I forget that. But like where I really sort of show is like my unique expression of me is like with my daughter, with my partner, when I'm in them 
like when I'm with my daughter. I pay so much interest and attention to her, not because I need to do that, I need to do this, it's because I want to. And, and I get a joy. I have no idea about manga or anime and stuff like that, but I get the joy from that, being interested in that. And that's the same like with my palm. Um, and that's, let's say, doing the best as I can to be as authentic as I can. when I'm with people. Yeah, that's, I think when it's, when it comes to giving a gift, it's, it's just like, um, if we're gonna give a gift to someone, we just give it to them. You know, it doesn't matter how which sort of comes out. Yeah, that's that's the way I could sort of answer that in a moment. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. I love just the, the real timeness of you. Like literally the answer is just it feels like it's just coming in the moment. And the more you talk, the more you just the more you just bring. You just think so I can see things that just come to you like, I'm gonna say this as well. So yeah, it's really cool. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thank you, Bowles. And thanks, James, for highlighting what you're seeing again. That's exactly what needs to happen. Thank you. B, what are you seeing? Hi, Hakan. That was really beautiful. Um, I had to laugh in familiarity when you were talking about you came out and you knew your daughter hadn't cooked breakfast like you, you totally were engaged with that thought and you're going to take action on that thought and it just and, and, and when you took the arc to not believe that anymore that you were not that thought that that wasn't true and you, you found out that you were just in that headspace again and it, it just, I'm laughing because it reminds me of my past. Like, that's just everything. And I loved the beauty of that arc, that new space that you went. And it's an interesting thing. In that moment, I believed she was just sitting in the living room, just listening to her YouTube and everything. In that moment, in that moment, I believed that. And then I was like, Hold on one second. Let's just pause for one second. But that's what one thing I realize is how our thoughts can be so real. And it reminds me of when I went to Japan and um, we went to a theme park. And it was this Spider Man theme park, 3D. You've got the 3D screens. We're all sitting there and watching the screen. And it seems like it's moving about. It seems so real. But when I looked to the side, I could see we're in a studio, in a room. It's not real. You know, that that pauses everything. You, you said you paused. That it reminds me of the uh, Viktor Frankl book where he talks about what, what is it, man's search for meaning? And he talks about having a pause first before deciding what's true. And I, I love how you, you did that. You paused with your daughter. And then when you were in the, the studio, instead of like going into that immersion, you'll cry, oh yeah, that pause I think is, is brilliant. I'm gonna, gonna remember that, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, B. And Selena? Hi, Hakan. By the way, my daughter is always in the background, so she may uh, join in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, I loved that. Thank you. And something that both V and James said is, is that pause 
it was lovely to listen to you talk. And it for me, it wasn't even what you said. It was the feeling that you brought to it and the slowness in which you did it and those pauses. Because life can be quite frantic nowadays and it's instant gratification. We want an answer. You know, we go on to Google and we wanted it 10 minutes before we Googled. And it's lovely to sit in a space where it just all calms down for a little while. And it all just slows really, really, really gently. So thank you. Thank you for the gift of that today. For me, that just felt like a gift. Busy time in the afternoon here in Ireland. Kids are home from school. It's dinner time and it's race, race, race. So thank you for that, Hakan. And regarding children, and I suppose my talk on Monday was about my daughter, Zoe. They really are our best teachers, aren't they? They bring us to the edge of the very thing maybe we don't want to look at sometimes. And then they bring us there and we have the choice to look and see what could be new and fresh. So thank you very much. I can really, really enjoy thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Angelina. And we have a comment from Debbie on the chat. She says, I loved how you realized it that when your daughter was born, you realized that that was when you felt joy. I love that you paused when your thoughts went to hurry so you could feel joy. And I'm sorry, there's a little thing in Zoom that I cannot able to keep reading. And a positive experience. I love that that soul's daughter came in during your chat. There are no coincidences. Thank you, Debbie. Anybody else that would like to share or ask? A question or share a story. Or we can take a short pause and then continue. Unless Hakan, there is something else that you would like to add now. I just feel gratitude. Thank you. The feeling is so nice. Okay, everybody. So let's take five minutes, okay? As we did yesterday. Okay, well, welcome back, everyone. I'm going to say that it is my absolute joy to introduce Catherine Joy which is such a beautiful name. And if you, if you get to know Catherine and you'll hear in the webinar that it's a perfect name for her. So Catherine is going to talk about, it's not my underwear that's inside out, it's me. Catherine has always felt like there was something missing, something beyond what she was taught by family and society. She grew up feeling self-conscious and anxious However deep within, she knew better. So she went on a quest for the missing link. She spent her teens and early adulthood doing self-awareness retreats and wilderness excursions and had lots of adventures. She majored in psychology, which gave her lots of food for thought. She moved on to acting and improv and had a lot of fun with the Meisner approach of being real in an imaginary situation. Fascinated with the inner workings of the body, she started doing massage, body work, and various forms of energy work. She has owned her own business for 20 years. In 2022, she started practicing Tai Chi and feeling the connection in her body and life energy moving within. At about the same time, she learned about the three principles, a spiritual psychology, which was truly the missing link. She is delighted and grateful to be a part of the Heart of Service coaching program. And we're very happy that she has joined as well. <laughs> and it is her hope to share the insights she's received to inspire others to search for the missing link which lies within. So Catherine, I am so happy that you are in this program and I am so excited to hear what you're gonna share. Thank you, Bonnie. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much um, for being part of this. And I'm starting to tear up 
already. And it's just for gratitude. I've been feeling a lot of gratitude today. So um, don't mind the tissues. That's just my uh, true feelings gushing out. So, uh, so welcome to, it's not my underwear that's inside out, it's me. Um, I think it's really fun and how the universe has a wonderful sense of humor because Hakan and I didn't plan, but we look like brother and sisters, don't we? We're both wearing black. You know, I had to sit on my hands when they said, do you have any questions or comments for Hakan? Because I'm like, yeah, me too, me too. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So, <laughs> so yay. Um, I think we're just perfectly matched today, Hakan. Um, so one of the things that <clears throat> life taught me early on um, is that life is a contact sport. It really is a contact sport. Um, <clears throat> when I was two or three years old, I, uh, I fell out of a shopping cart and hit my head on concrete and was pretty severely concussed. I was in the hospital twice for it. And um, for a while, my vision, and I still remember this, even though I was young, um, was so blurred that all I saw was stripes of color, stripes of color. And one of the emotions that stuck with me um, through all the nausea and the physical pain of the situation was how scared my mom was because she didn't know if I would get better. And I didn't know, if, obviously, if I would get better. So that, that kind of left an impression. Um, when I was in second grade, um, I was almost murdered. And by sheer dumb luck, I'm still here today on this planet. Um, it was because a, um, a floor polisher um, was taken a little too far and the cord snapped, you know, out of the plug and there was silence. And so the perpetrator ran off being afraid he would be heard. Um, in that point, I had an out of body experience because I was that close um, going towards the light, right? So I know what it was like to have a memory of being out of body. And then when I was in um, my senior year in high school, um, around that time, I was in actually several car accidents. Um, and one I was hit head on. And if the impact was just a little more, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. The steering wheel was like about an, an inch, inch and a half from my chest. And they had to pry me out with the jaws of life to get me out of the car. So <clears throat> from all this contact sport, um, I got really anxious about life. I got really scared about being in this world. And, you know, and there was chronic stress growing up. Uh, I'm, I know that a lot of people have that experience as children, just chronic stress in the, in the house environment. Um, and so I just kind of got really anxious in my thoughts and my feelings. But then the, I realized at some point that that's not me, that anxiety, um, that PTSD. I don't think I had a term for it until later in life. Um, that those thoughts and feelings that were swimming around were kind of on the surface. And there was something deeper within me. Um, I love the kind of analogy of the ocean. So when you're deep, deep, deep in the ocean, there's nothing out there. You can't, there's just a, a dark blue sea. You're just floating. You're just suspended. You're just being, you're like a con. You're taking a pause. You're in the depth of yourself. And then if you kind of go a little farther up, then you're on these streams, you know, like these 
energy currents that will take you from one continent to another and you're swirling and you're moving and you're in life and you're just going, right? You're just being and going. And that's one state of being, um, this movement, this energy, this percolation that is in us, that bubbly feeling like champagne. And they just go with the flow. And when you're in that flow, it's like time stands still and you're just doing your do. You're not feeling anxiety. You're not second guessing yourself. You're, you're there. You're doing whatever your do is, right? You're working out, you're drawing, you're playing piano, you're doing Tai Chi, whatever. And that's one level. And then if you get on the surface of the ocean, it can feel a bit scary, right? It feels, you feel all these things and you can get bad around and you go try to get up for air and then a wave comes and you can't breathe because you just got knocked back under the water and you perk back up and you're just kind of tossing and turning in these waves, right? And that's kind of where like our personal thoughts are and our personal emotions are. And the good thing about that is it's just surface level right? It took a long time for me to realize that's not who I am. That's not who anybody is. And when I see other people being bad around by the ocean waves and trying to come up for breath and then get put back under and bobbing up and down, I can have a lot of compassion for that because I see it in me. And And to know also there's more to us, right? Um, But when I didn't know that, and I was believing these thoughts and feelings were me, um, when I didn't know what thoughts were, that thought's just a form of energy, right? And that our emotions are telling us the quality of our thoughts. I believed them. And so I tried to resist or retain or react to them. And one of the biggest ways I learned how to do that was for food. And so I would kind of overeat. Um, and I learned that I didn't like throwing up. So I, I would eat and then pause for 20 minutes. So that way I would stop feeling nauseous and I could eat again. And that's how I controlled the waves and the emotions um, for a lot of my life. And then starting teenage years, well, then there was alcohol and that was brilliant way to combat the waves and the emotions and not feel and resist, you know, um, and getting into that habit and that groove, um, of I, I want to resist this feeling. I'm going to react by doing that felt so habituated. It's like, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware of the thought anymore. It was just a response. Oh, bad day at work, you know, going to go for the wine and a chocolate bar, you know, (laughs) whatever. Chocolate and wine go really well together, by the way. Um, But it was just like this impulse, barely aware of my thought for just one more. And I remember having that thought as a kid. And so this, this recital of just one more thought became the dance of my life, like just one more drink, just one more um, chocolate, or I didn't even like sugar, I would eat it, I would eat food I didn't like. So just one more whatever piece of food, um, one more TV show, you know, five more minutes before going to bed. It was like, I'm the adult and the child within me going, no, I just want to stay up for five more minutes. No, you really need to go to bed, honey. You know, it's a school day. (laughs) You've got to go to work tomorrow. No, I just really want five more minutes. It was like this mantra and just kind of reactionary and um, resisting the flow of who I am on the inside. And And that's kind of how I live my life and kind of looking outside for validation, looking towards other people, um, being very hypersensitive to what people um, saw in me, what they thought of me, um, super sensitive to any critiques, which I am very prone to mistakes. So it made that difficult 
because it was very surface level thinking of who I am. Um, and and I on the positive side of knowing that there was something deeper, I also went into psychology. You know, how does the brain work? How does our emotions work? I went into a lot of different spiritual realms, like what is the non-form? Because when you're in that deep level of you, it's not something that you can touch, see, taste. It's a non-form. It's spir- and that's what I mean by spiritual, that it's the non-form, the fabric of who we are, right? And I love that space. And so there was a lot going on in my life based on reaction resisting my thoughts or retaining them, you know, ruminating. I used to have insomnia for most of my childhood, um, just ruminating, just staying up late, thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, And how do you calm that quiet mind, right? And then two years ago, my sister Heather, said, hey, have you ever heard about the three principles? And I'm like, well, no. And she's like, well, there's a, a person, Paula, um, in Colorado who who is doing this seminar and I want to do it with you. Um, and so we did um, a private seminar with Paula on the book, Michael Neal's book, Creating the Impossible. So Hakan, like you, Michael Neal, big fan, big fan. <laughs> And one of the homework assignments she had us do was every day, sit and do nothing for five minutes. I'm like, wow, that that should be easy. Oh my goodness, right? Like the monkey brain is going, uh, getting all squirrely, just sitting there doing nothing. And I fell in love with that exercise. That exercise with the deep plunge from the waves, getting motivated by currents, like I had written my first two poems during the course. It's a a 13 week book. It's a masterpiece, Creating the Impossible. So it was a 13 week um, seminar that my sister and I did um, every week and got coached with how our week went. And it allowed me to have space within to listen to myself, my true self, not the thoughts, not the emotions um, that were steering me and in, in making me feel busy without any productivity, right? It's just blah, 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 blah. So when I did the creating the impossible on day nine, I will read this to you. Day nine says nose means yes. And they mean nose like this. So nose means yes. This is hard to read with a nose on, by the way. I had a friend who was a clown. When he died, all his friends went to the funeral in one car, Stephen Wright. When I was a drama student, one of my favorite workshops was clowning. We were each handed a red nose and told that if we chose to put it on, we would be joining the sacred order of only one rule. Whilst wearing the sacred red nose, the answer to any question you ask is an enthusiastic yes. If they said, can you seduce a woman? You would go over and seduce a woman. If they said, can you climb a mountain? You would climb a mountain. And if they said, can you swallow nitroglycerin and blow yourself up? nitroglycerin would be swallowed and exploding would ensue. The point of this exercise was that if you didn't block a creative impulse, something new would be created from it. So I did my five minute routine, put my nose on. And the first thing that I heard very clearly was I want a divorce. And I thought, well, I'm never going to listen to my inner wisdom again. Holy crap. (laughs) And so then I had to deal with the waves and the emotions. Because when I was in that deep space, 
I knew that that was my next step. And I had known that for, and I had been married for 25 years. And I had known that since before we were married. And so did he, that we were not right to be coupled as husband and wife. And so my sister and Paula um, and I worked through my emotions for a couple of months and just driven by inner wisdom. When my husband asked me one night, and it happened to be New Year's Day, um, what was wrong? I took the plunge. I listened to my inner wisdom and told him. And some of the waves and, and stuff, I don't mean to belittle them. Because one of the waves was, I don't want to hurt someone I love. I do love him. And miraculously, we are still friends and get along. It just wasn't the right fit for our relationship. And so when he asked why, I don't even remember what I said to him. I don't remember the insight, but it was an insight. He said, you're right. And so for someone to get on the same page with me so fast, I knew it was coming from a deep, deep space of my truth and who I am. And that doesn't necessarily mean if I'm coming from my heartfelt space that someone's going to agree with me or that it's going to go smoothly. You know, it doesn't create an outcome, but it allows the space for another person to be authentic in their heart space. And if it resonates with them, they can be there with you and they can experience that, oh, this is the right course of action and deal with the waves. It's all one ocean. It's just a matter of what level of the ocean are you experiencing? And so the, mis the three principles for me to realize I am not my thoughts, I am not my feelings. That is just a superficial part of the energy that is always there. And when you give yourself a moment to pause, you get to create something new, something fresh, something now. Instead of the groundhog day of not being authentic, of living in the past. I do the same routine every day. I see the same people every day. I, you know, that, that, that. I'm avoiding these feelings, so I'm doing this over here. But when you know who you are, you can still feel the waves and know that there is something more within you. And you're not being as influenced by external. So let me see if that's it. Um, yeah. So we all have this inner GPS wisdom within us. I am blessed. We recently, um, that was almost two years ago, we recently were able to finalize our divorce. I changed my last name to Joy because that is one of my favorite expressions of our inner wisdom. Um, gratitude is also one of my favorite expressions, but Joy is a shorter last name, so I went with that. And you'll notice that when you do follow your inner guidance from within, you'll be inside out, not your underwear, and you'll be on a good roll. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine. That was, um, God, there's so many beautiful insights that you shared in this talk. Um, and it was fun. So I love, I love the props that you used. Um, 
Yeah, I really love how you were pointing to how you followed your wisdom and saw that the deeper truth really guides us. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Really beautiful. So the floor is open. Does anyone have a question, comment, story? Thank you, Catherine. You know, if, if you kind of took me back to my childhood, you know, when you actually mentioned about, um, it reminded me of a time when I used to do the thinking thing, you know, before sleeping, I'm thinking, and then I can't sleep because of the fact that I'm doing the thinking and thinking and then somehow or another it's like I just sort of gave up and um, fell asleep but there was so much in there and I love the way that I could really sense your being there through your sharing and the courage it took for you to make that decision to listen to your wisdom Thank you. Thanks, Akan. Anyone else? Comments? Questions? V? Hi, Catherine. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm I'm I want to rest in is that what I want to say um I loved how you talked about expressions of inner wisdom and that you mentioned two of them as as gratitude and joy and I just think that's gorgeous and I also want to comment on the um laughter the the willing to connect through laughter that's sort of piggybacking on the joy i i i do really appreciate that thank you it was a that was a beautiful talk yeah thanks v um one of the things that really helped me get through my childhood um, and the, well, the stress of the childhood, my thoughts about the stress of my childhood um, was comedy. Like growing up, Lucille Ball and Carol Burnett were my heroes. Um, and um, Lucille Ball considered herself a clown, not a comedian um, or an actress. And it was a moment to pause from the stress of my life and to lighten up and laugh. And I find humor very healing because if we're, if our thoughts are like a steam train and just going and going and going and going, one thing about humor is it can kind of change tracks. Like you can only see one thing one way, you get a little tunnel visioned. And then the joke, puts it in a different context and shifts it, right? And so I love that about humor, that it brings levity. It can bring laughter with sorrow. It can bring a group of people who are tense into a lighter space. So I, I love the use of humor. When done correctly, mwah. <laughs> it's very good. Thank you. Thank you, Thea and Catherine. Anyone else? Ali. Hi, everyone. Um, Catherine, I just loved what you shared just now. 
and I have a question for you. Um, I've found that in the course of my life, um, laughing about things that happened was the hardest thing that I could ever do. You know, obviously this this has changed since, um, you know, getting to this understanding. But what you just said about, you know, that spotlight, that tunnel vision suddenly opening up through just, you know, changing the, you know, your face muscles, but not just that, because there's a connection to something deeper. And you do that brilliantly. But, you know, how could you point to that in a kind of a, in a more down to earth way? It's not a, a critique to you, it is is um is um request, you know, for help for those people and have been there, um, who have been, you know, who are still in, you know, at the surface and get the waves and get, you know moved around and, and get under and then back up how can you laugh how can you find a way to actually you know dissipate that tunnel vision because I know there is but I can't point it personally so maybe you can what do you think yeah that is a very good question um because I'm not sure how to do it as a technique because a lot of the humor that comes, I feel, is coming from that deeper spot within me. Like if mm. I tried intellectually to say, okay, create a joke now. Make them laugh now. It's not going to go well. It's not going to go well at all, right? And I found that the universe itself or the um, universal mind, that energy does have a sense of humor, because here I am sitting with a clown nose. And the first thing I'm like, okay, what am I saying yes to? And I want a divorce. That's pretty heavy. And I'm sitting here with a clown nose and I'm like, well, isn't that a little bit of irony, right? Like the, it kind of like just was a part of it. And I had times where, you know, in, in massage, I'm a body worker, but people come and they want to talk about their feelings and they want to talk about what's going on. I always ask people, one of the first things, the two things I ask is what's going on in your world and what are your goals for your session today? So I have some, so they're, they're the master of the ship. And when they get really heavy, sometimes something comes to me and my personality or my ego will be like, really, you really want to say that? And the inner wisdom goes, yeah say that and and they'll laugh they'll they'll lighten up it uh, like just kind of shifts gears a little bit but i'm sorry i can't tell you a technique for it but I, maybe just take five and pause because then yeah. maybe it'll come through that deeper level within to be a little lighthearted, to see, and not to, and it's not a dismissive thing either. It's not to dismiss the, the feelings that you're feeling or the seriousness of the situation, but it can bring a little space into it. You mm -hmm. notice it, it can bring its own little pause and own levity. It's a little life jacket mm -hmm. for the situation. Like you're okay, you're still supported. You may be in the thick of it, you know. If you're in the middle of hell, keep walking, right? Like just keep going. And it's that little boost of energy maybe that they needed, a little spark of encouragement that they needed. So it doesn't even have to be humor, but it's that whatever brings space so they stop circling, you know, get out of the maelstrom, mm. you know, that little life raft. Mm. so yeah. you'll know in the moment mm. I mean I know that the more we hold that space the lighter we feel it's it's mm. what I mean I think it, it's the fil rouge uh, here and there obviously there's a naivety in the question because we will I mean sometimes I I would like to give a solution but it's like when Peter Pan says think of a happy thought you know to kind of you know, <laughs> kind Lift of uh, like yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. 
And I love that. But sometimes it just comes out the wrong way because, you know, when people are caught up, they just want to be listened to. And that's the key, you know. If you think, if you tell them to think of a happy thought, they just kick you. <laughs> your yes, would I, right? Like, <laughs> don't tell me what to do. You're not well, the boss. You know, right? what is she on about? <laughs> well. I can't tell you how many times I've said that. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> myself, you know? <laughs> That's right? funny. And, uh, but, <laughs> but it is also that way. And I might... You know, again, you can't predict outcome. But mm. if I'm coming from a heart space and not the ego space, I'm not trying to solve a solution. I'm not I'm not trying to be funny. It really goes wrong when I try to be funny. And oftentimes mm. my body will let me know because I'll actually mess up my words. Mm. I'm really surprised I didn't mess up my words because when I get nervous, my words come out kind of, you know, verbally dyslexic. And so... <laughs> When I try to be funny, oh my gosh, you know, the punchline's first and the first sentence last and, you know, it's, it, it goes badly. So, yeah. <laughs> but when you're coming from the heart space, you do have to let go of that egoic, what will they think? Oh no, mm. should I, shouldn't I? Well, that's the waves. So mm. what are you going to listen to? The deeper part of yourself or, oh, uh, you know, so I hope that was helpful. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Allie and Catherine. That was that was a great little conversation. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? Jamie? Uh, hi. Uh, I, I just like to thank both of the speakers. That was just astonishing. Um, um, really enlightening. Um, but I just wanted to share something that happened to me this morning. And, uh, you know, it's like I, I woke up kind of confused and um, uh, scared and a little angry. And, you know, I had all of that going on, you know, about a few things that I don't seem to have control over. And um, I did the pause, you know, I did the pause. And what I got was I really don't know what to do. You know, I, I just simply don't know what to do. And so... I just asked wisdom or intelligence or whatever it is, um, uh, I need help. You know, I need some guidance here. And uh, and that, you know, I've been doing that for a while now, and I find that it always comes. But the, 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 the real gift that comes is I'm able to stop struggling it, just simply by... I've given up trying to think my way out of it, you know, because I've asked like somebody else, you know, tell me what to do here. So I'm not listening. I'm not talking to myself anymore. You know, I'm actually becoming the listener um, uh, in a sense uh, without knowing when it's going to come. And um, uh, something very beautiful happened that was, you know, really uh opened my mind in a way that I don't remember it being that open. And uh, I, the problem was over. You know, the situation was the same, but the problem was over. And um, uh, and so thanks. And everybody else has spoke. Wow, what an amazing uh, meeting this is today. Thanks. That's yeah. Thanks for sharing, Jimmy. Yeah, the... the that is a beautiful share. And it just really points to when you're in that deeper level, you you have a, a, a bigger pond to fish in, right? Um, you can't, I heard this said before, I forgot who said it, um, but you can't solve a problem at the level of the problem. So if the problem is overthinking, overthinking, more thinking is not going to solve the problem. You have to go deeper, bigger. So get into the space get into that moment of just pausing and and it seems like that's what you did and um you, that's just the perfect example of when you're in that deeper space within yourself you know it's like will the real you please stand up you know <laughs> not this 
Hmm. Yeah. You had a bigger, bigger pond to swim in. Thanks for sharing, Jimmy. Thank you both. And Albert Einstein. Thank you. <laughs> it's one of my favorite quotes from. <laughs> um, anyone else? We can still take another question, comment or two. There are a couple of things I see in the chat. Debbie said, I'm impressed that by following your wisdom, you are able to have a healthy divorce. Thank you for sharing that with us. And um, oh, Cynthia just had to leave, so she was thanking both of you. <laughs> Anyone else? I think I'm going to always remember from now on Catherine saying, will the real you please stand up? You know, I just heard everything in my, in my head. It will never go away <laughs> because that was really, like that was a perfect ending for everything you have shared. Um, blew my mind. So thanks so much, Catherine, for everything, for being so authentic, for sharing both of you. Again, and Catherine, this is such a delightful moment to be together. And if you allow me, I'm going to share a little bit about what's coming tomorrow, okay? Because this week is like full of wonders. So tomorrow, Thursday, we are having our dear B line talking about life is a playground. Why aren't you playing? So we're going to have fun with her. And also with Alessandra, our dear Alessandra Diciati, Ali, tap into your portable well-being no matter the circumstances. So we keep going. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of you here. If you can join, do it. And if you're watching the recording and you have any also, that, that's something that I was thinking. If you're watching the recording and you do have questions for Katrin or Hakan or comments or stories or any of the other speakers, just reach out to us and we will give them your questions and so you can be connected. Okay? Yeah, thank you all for coming and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same zoom link. Mm. Bye. Bye.